Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. For today's video, I am going to be discussing some skincare tips with you all, which I wish I knew earlier. Now, I have done a video previously on the same topic with different tips, so I would highly suggest you check out that video first because it has some tips that you might not already be aware of and they might benefit you a lot. So I'm going to give you about five to ten seconds on the clock right now, so you can just click out of this video, go to that video, and come back to this video. All right. Now that you've watched the previous video, we can talk about some more skincare tips that would really help you all out. These are again. tips that i've learned from my experience and i'm just so glad that i learned these through trial and error because i can truly vouch for them and i can say as a matter of fact that these tips really do work they're not like a generic nonsensical tip that you would be seeing everywhere these are tips that were very specifically you know learned through trial and error as i said so yes without any further ado let's get started The first tip I have to give to you guys is to make sure that the packaging is in sync with the ingredient that you're buying the product for. Now let me give you an example that would really make it easy for you to understand this. Remember how we had chemistry in 10th standard and we used to see all of those lab experiments and they used to store sodium in kerosene because sodium as soon as it came in contact with air would burn because it reacted with air. Just like that a lot of skincare ingredients react with the environment that they're kept in and a packaging that would make sure that they're not in contact with those environment mental factors is really important. I talked about this in a previous video of mine where I talked about vitamin C being sold in clear bottles. Now of course vitamin C won't go bad instantly like it's not like sodium that would just set on fire instantly, but it will lose its potency. It will start deteriorating as soon as it comes in contact with sunlight with air. So you need to make sure it's a UV protected packaging. You need to make sure it's in a pump form so that you know it's sort of protected from the environmental factors like that. Just like that there are a couple of different things like peptides ceramides and how they do sort of like deteriorate when it when they come in contact with air so that's why tubes are preferred or pump packaging is preferred so make sure whatever ingredient you're buying the packaging is sort of aligned with it it's in sync with it so you are getting the most out of your money because what will end up happening is you will be applying a product which has lost its potency over a period of time and you are just wasting your money which none of us wants right The second tip is going to be checking the pH of the skincare. Now I cannot stress on this enough. Like I really cannot stress on this enough. So the thing is our skin by nature is already slightly acidic because it just inhibits the growth of bacteria that might just harm our skin. So it's slightly on the acidic side. It's not neutral on the pH level. So whatever skincare we apply on our skin has to be in that range of slightly being acidic so that our skin barrier is not compromised. If you're using too alkaline of a product which is more than 7 on the ph level you are compromising on your skin barrier so if you're using a soap that is just too harsh and too alkaline it would compromise your skin barrier and that's why a lot of times when we see we, when we are using bar soaps that are not ph balanced it does strip our skin off of moisture because essentially what it's doing is it's just meddling with the ph level of our skin so make sure you are aware of the ph of your product you don't have to be completely on point with it but just a slight idea thankfully these days a lot of companies are mentioning the ph of their products if not you get ph strips for a very very cheap price i have that at my home and if there's a product that you have are been using and you see that there's a difference in your skin not in a good way then you can definitely just quickly check the ph of the product and make out why is it not working for you The next tip is not letting your clay masks dry. Now this is for me. Like let's take a moment of silence for me because this is something I have done for half of my existence. Not even kidding you, half of my existence. Now clay masks, I love them. Even when I'm from the dry skin type, I love clay masks because they just make me feel refreshed and they just make me feel like the impurities have been sucked out even if that's not true. It just feels like that is what I'm saying, right? So, even as a kid when I used to apply base and upton like my bua and my mom used to apply base and uptons on me like on an everyday basis and I used to love it. So, base and uptons or any other uptons that are dried down sort of a formula, I used to let them dry down for hours and hours. I was like jitna zyada sukhega utna it would benefit me, which was the stupidest thing you could have done. It dries down your skin to an extent it becomes dehydrated. So, do not let your clay mask, no matter what clay mask you're using, it can be an upton, it can be multani mitti, it can be a freaking for us essential it doesn't matter don't let it dry down to the extent that it's completely cracking on your skin if you are caught up with some work if you are multitasking just take a quick spritz of any facial mist so that it's rehydrated and it's not drying down on your skin and remove it once it's like semi dry to ensure that the moisture level of your skin is maintained the more you let it dry the more you're harming your skin so next time when you're going to be clay masking remove your mask once it's semi dry okay 
okay the next step is on pores and again it's something that i truly believed in and it is that steam opens up our pores so it's easier to clean them out again a moment of silence for me like really a moment of silence for me i really believed in this and i think a lot of people do and it's like something i believed in up till like last year before i started really researching on skincare and seeing what's true what's not what's a myth and i started following a lot of dermatologists online listening to what they have to say listening to researches reading research papers and i learned out that your pores can't be opened by steam the only thing that you're doing is that you're making your skin a little bit more absorbent by steaming it and you can also harm your skin if you are steaming it too much because steam is latent heat and sometimes you don't even realize that latent heat can damage your skin so yeah uh not exactly the best thing to do to your skin so you can't open up your pores your pores will remain uh you know the way that they are they can't be open or be shut what you can do is you can clean them out and you can clean them out with the help of exfoliants not with the help of steam <laughs> steam won't do that for you so exfoliants would help you out in cleaning your pores and i would suggest chemical exfoliants you don't have to go crazy with the percentages like a 30% or a 35% you can do like a 1% or 0.5% a very gentle chemical exfoliation you would also clean out your pores so that they're not clogged so yeah steaming your pores won't really help is a tip that i really want you guys to look into the last tip is to do more with hands than it to do with your facial skin now i was talking about this on my instagram stories a couple of weeks ago and i really thought this is a tip that i should be giving out you know in a more permanent sort of a way than a story is so basically i was reading this article where they were talking about madonna and how she has gotten done botox and fillers all over her face but her hands show her true age now i have to start off by saying there's nothing wrong with aging or with botox both are fine like aging is natural botox is a choice and both are fine but if you're doing something to your face might as well you know help your hands in there so if you are using products like a retinol or a peptide or a ceramide that is to do like help you with aging you might as well put them on the back of your hands with whatever's remaining on your palms after application that is something i've started doing like every single time i'm done with my serum and patting it in i pat it on the back of my hands too because if i'm doing so much mehnat for this face i might as well you know take it a notch further and make sure that my hands don't give me up so yeah that was my last tip I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do let me know if you like to see more videos in this series because honestly we are all learning every single day. I am you are the dermatologists are there newer inventions, newer discoveries every single day and we're all in this together. Skincare is a journey we are all taking together. So if you would like me to you know talk about some more tips that I might learn on this journey then do let me know. I would love to share more tips and tricks with you guys and that's going to be it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Till then take care. I love you all so much. Mwah. Bye. Oh,